Okay, dear colleagues, uh, ladies, gentlemen, it's a pleasure for me to be here and to share with you some words and some detail about this entity, the silent sinus syndrome. We just collect 18 cases from different hospitals in Belgium. And in my topic, I have first some definition to give you to analyze the concept and to present this uh, retrospective study. So the first question is, uh, what is a paranasal sinus? The paranasal sinus is a hair filled cavity buried in the, skull, in the skull bone. The ventilation and the drainage are possible via an ostium in the nasal cavity. Their development is explained by two theories. The oldest and maybe the best known is proposed by a Zucker Kandel. Zucker Kandel said that the sinus start the development from the nasal capsule, then they go away lateral to the lateral nasal wall. And the more recent is from Jankowski. Roger Jankowski is an ENT from France, from Nancy. And he said that maybe a, a sinus result from the resorption of the bone marrow with production of air bubbles, nitric oxide, and it concerns the maxillary sinus, the frontal sinus, the sphenoid sinus, but not the etmoid, because the etmoid sinus is regarded as a vestigial remnant of the primary <coughs> olfactory organ. When we consider the size of the sinus, you may have small sinuses and large sinuses. You may have constitutional small sinuses, aplasia of the maxillary sinus, hypoplastic maxillary sinus, and on the other hand, you may have mega sinus, well over pneumatized sinus. But what we are dealing with is uh, the chronic atelectasia of the maxillary sinus or the silent sinus syndrome. The first thing is that a chronic atelectasia of the maxillary sinus was first described by Sopakor in 1994. And it seems when we look to the literature that this entity is maybe rare or rather underdiagnosed. So you can see here that you have retraction of the uh, intersinus wall here at the level of the middle meatus here, and you may have some uh, ipsilateral septal deviation, and uh, you have preservation of the other wall of the maxillary sinus. This is another example where you can see on the right side an opacification of the maxillary sinus here, a straight the nasal septum, the middle trivulate, the inferior trivulate, and the retraction, but there is no other abnormality on the other sinus walls. But you can see here, this retraction here, <coughs> chronic atelectasia, is usually found in case of chronic rhinosinusitis, and maybe we have to do some surgical treatment. When we talk about silent sinus syndrome, it consists of an imploding, an implosion of the maxillary sinus. And you can find also in the literature that it's the same that the chronic atelectasia of the maxillary sinus. Some authors divided the atelectasia in three types, type one, two, and three, and silent sinus syndrome could be the type three chronic atelectasia of maxillary sinus. It was first described by Montgomery in 1964. And in this situation, the condition is characterized by a unilateral spontaneous painless enophthalmus and hypoglobus, a deep superior sulcus, an increased orbital volume, retraction of the orbital floor, a telectasia of the epsilateral maxillary sinus, but there is no problem with the vision, there is no diplopia, and the visual acuity is normal. So look at uh, these two patients. They had silent sinus syndrome on the right side. There is a painless oculobo asymmetry, and you can see on this patient there was a right side in ophthalmus and a right side hypoglobus. 
on the CT scan, it's interesting to note that you have the retraction of the intersalus wall here at the level of the middle meatus, osteomental complex, but you have also retraction, downward displacement of the orbital uh, floor. You can see also that the anterior and posterior wall of the maxillary sinus are implodes and uh, uh, are retracted uh, in the maxillary cavity. When we look with the nasal endoscopy, you can see that there is a common finding that the lateralization of the incinate, which is very important. You can see it here on the right side, the septum, the middle turbinate, the bullet moidalis, the incinate process, the intersalus wall, and you can see that the incinate is lateralized. And you must think about this when you do the middle arthrostomy, because if you do it from onto to backwards, then you may go here in the etmoidal infundibulum, and you can go directly into the periorbit. So you have lateralization of the incinate, widening of the middle meatus, retraction of the intersinus wall, ipsilateral septal deviation is a common finding. We do not know is the consequence of the syndrome or is the cause of the syndrome. Lateralization of the middle turbinate and the risk of sinecure uh, postoperatively, but usually you have no pus, you have no polyps. So the treatment of this is, of course, surgery. The middle maxillary antrostomy stop the evolution of the process. You have to do the middle antrostomy from back to front to avoid injury of the periorbit. And so this is a different step of the uh, technique. This is a chronic atelic treasure of the maxillary sinus here, retraction of the intersinus wall, the endoscopy, the turbinate, the pedalis, and sinate intersinus wall. And the first thing is maybe to medialize with the Castel Novo Secre the ensinate. Otherwise, you can medialize the ensinate with your base biter. You will cut between the superior part and the inferior part or the horizontal part of the ensinate. And then you do the uh, middle antrostomy safely. So this is a comparison pre and post ops. You had you see on the uh, superiorly, you have a retraction on the right side with the septal deviation, and this is a postoperative finding where you see that the, uh, the sinus is clear of disease. There is no hypertrophy of the mucosa, there is no more secretion. We do not touch the insulator, the bullet my dad is still intact. <laughs> so, what about the the study, the retrospective study, it's a cohort of 18 patients operated for chronic arterial tertiary of maxillary sinus between 2000 and 2015 in four different tertiary hospitals. So we have seven ladies and, eight, and 11 men. The mean age is 44. And in nine out of these patients, we had sinonasal complaint. And so if you are an ENT, your patient may have some sinus complaint, but in the a part of the, the population, there is no complaint. You can see just the facial asymmetry, or you can see the abnormality on the CT scan. But on the contrary, when you are ophthalmologist, you can see that there are some visual and ocular uh, complaint. So on the CT scan, all the patients at an increased orbital volume with downward displacement of the orbital floor, all at uncinate laterals and fused to the lamina papyracea. We had, of course, very commonly a nipsy lateral septal deviation, and we may have lateralization of the middle turbinate. So we perform a middle antrostomy with resolution of the facial pain or the sinus complaint. Only one patient out of 18 is still seeking for a medical advice for 
placement of an orbital implant due to persistence of the facial asymmetry, but in the majority of the case there is no need to, to put an implant because you may have re-expansion of the maxillary sinus. No complication, no stenosis of the middle antrostomy. So implosion of the maxillary sinus is maybe a relative, relatively rare, but certainly under diagnosis entity. It's an evolving process leading to an enough thalamus. It's the final step of an implosion of the maxillary sinus, but just before this ultimate step, we may have type 1 and type 2 at the electricity of the maxillary sinus. When you see a retraction of the entire sinus wall, that's a sign of chronic sinus disease, and you have to propose surgery. Nasal endoscopy is very important. CT scan can demonstrate all the abnormality on the maxillary sinus. And middle antrostomy is a treatment of choice, leading to the resolution of the symptomatology and in case of uh, type 3 atelectage, an orbital implant can be necessary, but usually in a second step, six months at least after the surgery, because re-expansion of the sinus is a possibility and a reality. Thank you for your attention.